Welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and along for the ride is Mitch Grohl and Dean Chambers. How you doing, gentlemen? Very good. And we are fortunate enough to have the 2041 PNFL champs uh, from the Los Angeles Chargers, Steve Corbett. How you doing, Coach? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks. All right, I know it's a little bittersweet. It's a little bittersweet because we got the champion here, and we have the uh, the opposing coach who put up a good game, but he's here as well. So we're gonna try to get this thing kicked off, and uh, we're gonna have some discussions about that, and then moving into uh, what thing, what things are looking like so far during the early off season, and welcome a new coach into the league. So uh, to get this kicked off. As everybody knows, uh, Los Angeles was hosting Atlanta, and uh, we thought it was going to be a much closer game, but the coach is going to talk about this, and L.A. ended up taking that victory 35-17. to We're going to kick this one off with Mitch. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope everyone listening was able to watch this game either live or on the recording, but it was definitely worth the watch. Um, lots of uh, big plays, lots of mistakes, uh, lots of lots of craziness, but lots of fun uh, as well. Uh, 35-17 final score definitely fit what we saw. I mean, the Los Angeles, uh, both sides of the ball uh, played well. Uh, once we got past those first couple of minutes, um, and, uh, you know, rushing and passing a good balance, uh, you know, Dalvin Cook and Kaiser kept that ball moving, uh, no turnovers, uh, even, even though there was rain, but I tell you what, the, the big, big, uh, impact of this game was that Los Angeles defense. And I, I just don't think the Los Angeles defense, and I'm being serious, you all, I don't think the Los Angeles defense, we talked enough about it throughout the season. If you go back and you look at, you know, uh, defense, scoring defense, uh, Los Angeles uh, was in the top three, I believe, in the league. Uh, and I think led the AFC in scoring defense. And so this isn't like all of a sudden this defense, uh, you know, had a good game. They've been playing good all year. At nine sacks, four interceptions, had poor Justin Fields running around, uh, you know, in circles. In fact, the longest run by Atlanta was an 18-yard scramble by uh, by Fields, and um, you know, it, uh, it was just uh, a monster day by that defense. You know, so they scored a, on an INT return, uh, gave uh, the the short fields to Kai uh, to uh, Kaiser and. Uh, to cook, and they took advantage of it. So, uh, big win for Los Angeles, and um, you know, it's a good win, really good win. Yes, it was, and we are going to talk to the winning coach, uh, Coach Corbett. Now, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I, I'm as far as how this game went, I definitely was pleased. Um, I was not expecting it to be lopsided at all, um, <clears throat> like that. I was not expecting a nine-sack, four-interception defensive um, triumph at all. I was I was expecting a much closer game. <clears throat> when I was scouting Atlanta, um, I, I basically had two days to scout, for, scout Atlanta. I had Friday and Saturday only so um, because of a work event I had earlier in the week, but I was thinking way ahead before the game, what I wanted to do in, in my mind, you know? So, um, so when I set out to work, I mean, I was just like, I watched the two games before and I saw like what he was doing really well. Um, he had a really strong, um, innovative passing um, game in place with all the plays that he had created. Um, he was definitely using a lot of those, um, not the same ones each game, but he was definitely using a lot of them. And I was like watching just how like, they were so good. I was like, oh, my God, I've got to stop this passing game. And then I also saw his deep threat attack. And, and Jerry mentioned that last week in the show that you know, he was going to try to shut that down, too. And I was like, I, I have to shut that down no matter what. So I, I made sure that I was going to go after that. And he still got a couple of those off. And I was like, what the? I was like, damn. 
<laughs> even if those last two, those two last touchdowns were that he got were clearly because of that 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 big play potential that he had there with um, his strategy. But um, I went after the quarterback. That was that was one of my my intentions from the beginning of this game defensively. I was like, I, I have to go after Fields. There's no other choice. I can't let him even have time to think. Um, so I did go with a lot more blitz packages than I normally would because I do, I, I do want to actually ha- have a balanced because you, you could run a you could make a big run easily against too much blitzing. So in this league, so I, I was just like I have to shut him down, and and then on offense, um, I was really just looking at I, I I thought about going all pass like I've done with Kaiser before, but then after I just like looked at my season and looked how things were going and I looked at was but it seemed to be working against Atlanta. I was a little worried about that, that kind of top number one, number two, I think it was number one, I think passing uh, defense. I was like, I, I don't know if I should be doing that. So I had to really think about that. And so I decided to go up with more of a balanced attack again and um, just give cook a chance to get the ball and, 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 and try to do something with it for the team. Um, wasn't expecting rain. Made me really worried about fumbles when that, that initially showed up in the game. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, what have I done? Um, and then uh, the other strategy I did is I, I, I just felt, felt that I needed to stretch the field. So um, I watched what happened with Jerry's um, Redskins. Um, saw that he, he, had, he moved the ball well. He got 380-plus yards on, on them. But um, he had some – Kind of a little bit too many short passes, I thought, and and Atlanta was shutting that crap down. Like he was just shutting it down. So, um, so I, I I had to be like kind of balance out my offense a lot more than I would I, with Kaiser. Like I'm like he's got that 90, not a 92, <laughs> and so I was like I need to stretch the field, but I can't make it too much where he's going to be basically have to be Justin Fields and run the whole game himself. So it didn't work. Okay, a lot that was. I, I, like, I like to think that uh, Steve, you know, that that tough AFC Championship game really prepares you for the Super Bowl. But hey, that was just my thought. Absolutely, I think that did, and 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 and, and of course beating Thomas. I mean that 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 was a gauntlet, and and I, you got to give credit to Dean. Um, he went through a gauntlet too. I mean Justin and Jerry. Ow. Yeah, tough tough road right there. So we're going to move over to the other locker room. And uh, we have in the more subdued, quiet locker room, we have Dean. Let's, uh, what's going on over there, Dean? Uh, you want, let's talk about the game. What happened? Well, I think the first thing to uh, look at with this game, other than the weather, obviously, this is always a factor unless you play a game in a dome. Um, you know, we talked a lot about the season, but checking the weather forecast in, in Washington when uh, you're playing the Redskins. <clears throat> but I think the second, the second thing I noticed and probably more important factor was something that Mitch said, that the longest rushing attempt that the Falcons had in this game was an 18-yard rushing attempt by Justin Fields. You know, if, and, it, you know, we're, we're not talking about, you know, one of the more – higher speed acceleration quarterbacks that, that, you know, some of the teams may run a lot of quarterback draws for or whatever. So, you know, that's a sign. That's really a signal there of what's going on in offense, lack of balance in offense. If you're, if your largest rushing play is an 18 yard rushing attempt by Justin Fields, given that my team had a thousand yard running back in, in uh, Barry J Sanders. And I think the mistake was I made a, made a, uh, an adjustment in the profile on, on Saturday night where I increased the emphasis on passing and kind of downplayed the, the rushing a bit, especially in the first half. Because, you know, I, th- I think as any of you know, the, uh, the run and shoot offense without the run becomes the chuck and duck. And agreed, agreed. That's, that's, that's what we saw. The third thing we saw and this is maybe somewhat controversial, but it's what I saw, is that uh, Justin Fields under pressure played like a fourth-string quarterback. Um, you know, yeah. that, that pressure that he faced, he threw interceptions, 
I mean, not that it was like over because it's real, really too early to be over at seven nothing. But you know, when he throws that first interception, this run straight back to the end zone for a score, and it's Chargers seven nothing. That's not a good way to start, especially as the visiting team playing in the rain. True. I mean, your odds of the game go down dramatically the moment that happens. And then there were two different times where a comeback attempt and a score would have made the game possibly winnable. And on, you know, on the other side of the field, within 20 or 30 yards of passing, Justin Fields throws additional interceptions that pretty much snuffed out any chances of the Falcons winning this game. Um, and I think it was somewhat late in the game when it probably didn't really matter by that point other than just scoring another cosmetic touchdown when Justin Fields threw his fourth interception. I mean, the, the sacks even can, can be overcome. I mean, even nine sacks you can overcome because you get sacked in a second and 18, and then Justin Fields throws a 25-yard strike on a pass. You know, you basically erase that sack. But you throw an interception, especially one that's immediately run back for a score, that's really a backbreaker. So, you know, I know that nine sacks sounds like a lot, but that can be overcome, and I don't – that's maybe just an indication of the quarterback not making some good decisions and maybe not being a little bit quicker to, like, throw the ball away before getting sacked. But the interceptions are definitely much, much, much – worse than than getting sacked nine times. I yeah, think. the interceptions, the fumbles, you know, all those type of things that will definitely come back and bite you. And I, I have to agree with you, the sacks, you can overcome that, but the uh, turnovers, that's a much, much harder thing to um, to overcome. So I, I would agree on that one. So uh, any, okay, anyone else has any uh Final words on this one. Everybody's quiet. Well, I still think I still think Atlanta's a solid team, even with the changes of quarterback they've been making already. So I mean, it's just I think I think he's he's kept the majority of the core of the team. He's upgraded the offensive line. I'm thinking that's what he's probably been doing with some of the trades recently. And uh, I would I would not count them out next season. Oh heck no, you don't count him out next season. No, I, I think he's definitely a front runner. Over and on the NFC side to uh, to be in that final uh, that uh, return, yeah, yeah to, to return there again or go deep into the playoffs again. So, you know, it's just you know at the bottom line, someone has to win, someone has to lose, and it all comes down to the game plan. And on this particular, um, as they say, any given Sunday, this particular Sunday, um, you got the best of them on this one. So, um, well, I would this about the Super Bowl. I think it was great, and I think a lot of people would agree that. We had two different teams playing in the Super Bowl this year that we had in several seasons. I remember at the beginning of the season thinking that it looked like Chicago and the Jets were the best two teams. When you look at last year's Super Bowl, that wasn't even close either. Um, the Jets very easily handled and beat Chicago in that Super Bowl. So you think a team as good as Chicago is that dominated the NFC the way they did, go to the Super Bowl and get destroyed by the Jets. It looked like Who's going to beat the Jets? The Jets are, like, invincible. And this season kind of refuted that. I mean, this season, we had so, there were so many upsets. There were so many teams. There was so much parity in the league that we've been talking about. It was so competitive. And it, I think in that way, it was fitting that you finish the season with a Super Bowl that has neither the Cardinals nor the Jets playing it. And with all the rain games, as much as I don't like – the rain, but as, as with all the rain games we've had this season, it seems like we've had way too many of them that we should have. I guess and as unusual it is probably for to have rain in LA that we finished the season playing a Super Bowl in the rain. Yeah, I but I think it's a great thing for a team. <laughs> rain in LA, what? <laughs> that yeah. just blew my mind when that game started like that. I was like, oh no. Yeah, the first thing I thought. <laughs> Yeah, when I saw that, bad. Well, the first thing I thought when I saw it, I was like, okay, my, I, I heard Mitch in my head saying, yeah, what's the weather like? Is it going to rain or not? And that's all going to come down. That was the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the rain. It's like, yeah, 
<laughs> Mitch is in here. Mitch is in the game. He's in the game. Uh, well, well, I'll tell you the the takeaway I have is this: is that uh, I, you know, obviously, I don't think this year that Justin Fields will win multiple Super Bowls at some point. I'll just say that. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, Coach Holtz this time, kind of downplaying it. He's coming, stepping bold. Okay, so. As well, we go ahead. Let me ask you a question about that prediction. Are, are, are you predicting that's going to happen in Chicago, or do you think that that uh, Justin ultimately decides that he's going to move Justin Fields to another team for whatever he can get for him? Then I have no idea. I have he no idea. But uh, he'll uh, he'll end up winning multiple Super Bowls, probably in Chicago, but. Was shocking. He's like, Steve, can you do you want Justin Fields for Kaiser? Kaiser? <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, or I would say, you know, he traded him to Detroit. The Detroit would turn around and trade him to somebody for all their draft picks. There you go, and then they end up winning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure about that because I think Sam Donald is playing for several more seasons in Chicago. I think. Uh, like I said on the forum, I think that trade basically relegated Justin Fields for many, many seasons being the backup to Sam Donald unless unless Justin trades him to another team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to look at what said. Uh, well, we'll get that to the next segment. Well, we'll hold off, I guess, for the next segment. I'll bring that up. Okay. Well, we're going to go. Well, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pivot over to the next segment. So, uh, again, congrats to. Uh, to LA and congrats to Atlanta on a good season. So, um, moving over to the next segment as we're uh, having this discussion, um, moving into the off season. Uh, one thing we talked about during the pre-show was uh, how the how the teams looked overall, um, and touched a little bit on each one of our teams, the um, success and the failures. I think out of uh, the four people here, I think Seattle had the most disappointing season because we had the highest hopes. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and open this up. Uh, we can talk about our teams. Oh, by the way, that was Seattle's take right there. We had high expectations, and uh, we let everybody down in the in the Emerald City. So that's all we're going to say right now. Then we're going to go back to the lab and re- uh, retool and reboot. So Seattle's out of the way. Now, for the remaining individuals here, the reigning coaches, just going to kind of open this up and let you guys just talk about the league as a whole, the the teams. Um, I think it's just kind of like an open forum. Talk about your teams, your expectations. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about the off season, what you're seeing so far in the off season. Um, some teams being realigned. It's just an open forum right now. So, um, just I just took all that stuff, just threw it in the middle of the floor, and let you guys go ahead and have at it. So. Somebody go ahead and jump in and pick up the ball. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in since I was kind of about to jump into that anyway. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I think about, you know, like with Darnold and Fields in Chicago, um, you know, Darnold, you know, got hurt for a good majority of the season. And, you know, he had Trey Lance, you know, there to back it up. You're thinking, all right, he'll be okay. Well, then. Oddly, I don't think I've ever seen this, at least not while I've been in the in the league, where the backup quarterback gets knocked out for the entire season the week after the starting quarterback does. And so I, I can't remember how many years um, Darnold has on him. I think it's only about six or seven. He's he's I think a year behind uh, you know my quarterback, but uh, having a quarterback that is. Um, you know, have high potentials that you can put in that backup spot, uh, I think is becoming more important now as I've thought about it, because with the unretire or the anti-aging and retirement, um, you know, changes we've made here in the last couple of seasons, I don't think we're going to see, you know, the likes of a car or a locker, you know, lasting 15 years um, or 16, 17 years uh, like we've had in the past. So I'm sure we sure we could because people could, you know, use their roles and all that stuff to move them on. But um, I think the likelihood of that is going to be much less. And so having someone ready 
to step in after year 12 or 13 that will have five or six years to uh, on them um, that can go, I think it's going to be important. So, you know, when I was, you know, we we're kind of joking around about Kyle Allen uh, before he vanished from existence, apparently when he got cut. Um, yeah, I did have a thought about, Hey, you know what? Yeah, I'll go and try to, you know, not overspend, but Hey, I'll go pick him up and, uh, you know, let him be my backup behind, uh, Mayfield and, you know, Mayfield, when he gets to year 12, this guy will still have, you know, four, you know, maybe five good years to go. So anyway, that was something that was on my mind as, uh, some of this trading frenzy has picked up here, uh, in the last couple of days. So that, that that's my two cents for right now. Okay. Next person up. As far as, as far as the league where it's going, I mean, it's, it's the one thing I love about the league right now. It, it's full. I mean, we actually have a full league and it's 2023. This is awesome. I mean, this is the best time to be playing this. It's on YouTube. Um, like, come on, this is, this is the, this is the prime time to be in this league. And we actually have a wait list allegedly. So, so I'm, I think this is the best time for us to be in this league. This is the most exciting time. Um, I think what we're going to see is the, the realignment will definitely have an impact on, on the, each of the divisions, um, two newer coaches coming into the AFC West that, that might make it less, um, challenging for, you know, the veteran ones in the division still. Um, but basically, uh, but we, I could be wrong. They could be phenomenal coaches and blow us away and, and goodbye any chance of defending my title, for example. So, I mean, we don't know what we're going to expect with some of these new coaches yet until they start playing. Um, there's a big mystery there. Um, plus, we have a bunch of rising new stars, you know, New Orleans coach. I mean, wow, he got in the playoffs. He was solid. He beat the crap out of me. Um, so, I mean, seriously, like – uh, don't 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 be surprised if we have two different new coaches in the Super Bowl next year. I mean, we we, do, we don't know what we're going to get, but I think it's going to be it's just going to be really uh, a really interesting um, dynamic starting next season just to see where it all goes. All right, Dean. Yeah, there's been a lot of changes made, and uh, I'll uh, I think some of you are going to be surprised at what what Neil does. He's going to be, I guess, the Raiders now. Um, you know, he's been asking me a lot of a lot of questions about things and the kinds of questions he's asking, telling me, tells me that, uh, he's, he's going to improve. He's going to improve pretty, pretty rapidly once he gets his system in place. And he's no longer just, uh, riding on those, on those game plans and profiles that were in place as the headless horseman. Um, the league is for, we have 18 teams. I know we have at least one person on the waiting list. He goes by the name Shaggy. That's how he pronounces it. I think his actual real name is Nick. He's, uh, I think, think Stephen Mitch, my, I know Steve, I believe you know him from the old leagues as I do. Um, yeah. He showed up to watch the Super Bowl with us, even though he doesn't have a team. So, um, you know, he's eager to get a team as soon as one comes open. So I think that will happen. I think he'll be having enough patience to wait around until the team comes open and, and jump on it. Um, we've seen a lot of trades and a lot of moves. I mean, some with some degree of controversy. Um, you know, the the Kyle Allen situation maybe is the most notable and followed secondly by perhaps the Justin Fields situation. Um, you know, and maybe in some ways I had the same reaction as, as Tim did. You know, Tim saw Kyle Allen, which he blames for losing some games during the regular season and decided he's done with Kyle Allen. Um, but... I decided I was done with Justin Fields, but the next thought was, okay, I need to put him up for trade and get the most I can get for him. And I'm surprised that Tim didn't, Tim didn't do that. I mean, I don't know what he would have gotten or who he would have gotten it from, but I think it probably would have been a good thing if he had at least made an effort to uh, put Kyle Allen up for trade and get something for him. Well, I told you, I told you, Dean. I mean, gosh, I was willing to give up a first round pick to get Kyle, but <laughs> yeah, I was going. Right. But, um, I... <laughs> Is that a, four, a fifth round pick at like 45th in the draft order or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I was going to give up two firsts <laughs> to get Kyle Allen, man. <laughs> 
to trade you the 45th pick in round one for Kyle Allen. How's that? <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> so, yeah, so um, definitely a lot of things that are happening in the league during the offseason, a lot of moving and shaking as far as uh, um, players being cut. As you know, you guys are out there cutting players. Um, we know we have the draft that's going to be coming up soon. They're still working on the uh, the draft profile. Uh, you know, uh, With breaking and, news. Breaking news from the PNFL uh, news outlet. Uh, apparently, it looks like the commissioner will have the draft files ready to go by Thursday. That's hot off the press. Okay, there you go. So you guys got to get those get those changes out there now. I've been look as I've been looking at it as well. I see some change. I see some of these trades that are being made, and um, like we talked pre-show, it's like some of these trades that are going out there before the draft file comes out. It's like, do you really want to do that? Uh, you know. So even though I know you guys got to make some of these changes or some of these changes to your roster and teams, um, be careful not to, you know, take too much meat off of that bone because you don't know. What's going to be coming out in the draft? You don't know what the numbers are going to be, and you may think that you're all set up and you're going to rebuild during the draft, and then you realize, uh oh, I let too many of those people go. Um, I might, you know, want to wish you had some of those guys back. The lady get picked up, or they just say I'm done and they're retired out. So, um, would you guys agree with that or disagree? Yeah. But I, I think the co I think the coaches union, you know, should approach the league about having the um, draft file ready before the uh, Super Bowl, um, and uh, that way, folks uh, who aren't playing in the Super Bowl can be thinking about that uh, before you know we get into this frenzy. But uh, you know, well, that's something that we can address next year. Okay, up to Charlie. <laughs> yeah, up to Charlie. Up to Charlie. Yeah, so, as far as I look at the talent and what's going on with that, I mean. People are making decisions based on what they 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 wanted to do probably all right, all along. So um, I'm guessing the Indi Indianapolis didn't want Kyle Allen all along. I'm guessing um, Dean was questioning Phil's ability all along. Um, my team is coming back 99. percent I mean, I have I've, I've lost three players, three red players, two star receivers, and my left tackle. So that's all I have to to replace. So I'm bringing everybody back. So yeah, I'm not done. So, um, so watch out. So yeah, I'm 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 not worried about. I'm not going to be trading away anybody. I traded away um, Lamar Jackson, but he was he was he was brought in as an emergency relief when we had some injuries, and um, I figured that he could be played. He better use somewhere else, and and Dean grabbed him. So I mean, that, that's kind of that's where I am right now. I have four guys up for um, offer trade block right now. But um, they aren't critical to my team, <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to tell everybody. If you if you're thinking about making trades, you're thinking about doing any maneuvers right now. Wait for that draft pool, um, but think about making sure who who are your core guys, who who are the, who are the guys going to get you to the Super Bowl. Um, get get an idea who they are and 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 do everything you can to keep them. Ex restructure their contracts so you have them forever. Things like that. All right. So as we're going to come up uh, to this final segment, normally we do our uh, our normal predictions for the upcoming games, uh, but obviously there's no games left. So um, as we are, as I look at this next segment, um, I think what we're going to do, and I think uh, Mitch and Dean and I have discussed it um, during the off season, where we're going to be talking about some of the things that kind of help you guys out. Um, some of the tools, you know, the logger program. Um, I think the WS log stats is another one. Uh, maybe doing some play designs. And uh, we haven't really fleshed the whole thing out, but um, thinking maybe we can do some, um, I don't know, I'm putting these guys on the spot because this is their first time here and it's you know, it just popped into my head. So um, thinking about maybe doing something like a video capture um, of looking at possible play designs or how to look at your the logs and stuff to try to help build a, a better scouting profile um, obviously they're not going to give all give away all their trade secrets just the kind of a baseline um, overview of it 
Uh, would you think that that would be a good idea, guys, to kind of lean into that a little bit to kind of help? I mean, because I know Steve has mentioned that now is a good time to be in the league. There's a lot going on, uh, you know, a lot of participation that was out there. Um, we have the podcast going now. We have the newspaper that's going out now. So uh, for a game that's, what was it, gentlemen, over, what, 20-some-odd years old, if not more, 30, whatever it is, and it's still going strong, and it's, it seems like it's starting to have a resurgence. Uh, I think that that would be able to help um, help keep the interest up. What would you guys think? Yeah, I'm, I'd be open to uh, to that, and I also think uh, doing some sort of draft, you know, pre-draft special uh, would be helpful. Uh, and, and and I say that because I know that the last. A uh, few seasons as that draft pool has become more diverse in the ratings and as we've had newer coaches come on board, um, I'm seeing some folks make some similar mistakes that I made when I first got back in the league and probably reached for some players that, um, you know, they could have gotten later. And now with the ratings being more spread, those mistakes hurt more now than they did 10 seasons ago. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'd be open to doing some of that kind of tutorial kind of stuff. Yeah. What about you, uh, Dean? You feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, the draft pool comes out on Thursday. I think that's a good idea, too. But also, I want to mention the draft pool, if that comes out on Thursday, maybe Tuesday of next week, we could do next week's show and do that as primarily a draft preview show. Yeah, we could do that. We can do that. We look at what teams have the higher picks and have more picks and look at some of the more notable players that are in the draft pool and look at either projecting drafts out or talk about which players are going to likely go to which teams and you know, kind of that kind of talk that we can look at I think would be interesting for everyone. Yeah, we can definitely do that and see if we can get a couple guests on there. And You know, the idea is try to get the coaches involved and, and – uh, have the different coaches come in and, and, and give their little story and kind of it um, to get them on and get their ideas and their takes and and get to know the league so we all kind of get to know each other. Some coaches um, email and chat with each other, talk to each other on the phone. Some just kind of kind of stay off to themselves, but try to make it a bigger bigger group and try to make the game more exciting. I guess that's that's well, what I'm kind of looking at. I, I, th I think I think if you're gonna have any special guests on. For a draft special, uh, I, the one that the person that comes to my mind is the the draft king himself, and that would be James. You know, he, he's had all the picks for yeah. the last two seasons. So, you know, <laughs> if anybody if anybody should know the draft, it should be Jay. Well, they will well, definitely have to work on that. The interesting move there is the draft king himself has traded mostly out of this 2042 draft. Into the following year's draft, I think primarily. So, I think yeah. that's sort of an interesting movie. And you had posted an email that something about the, this is coming from the guy that has eight hundred draft picks, and he pointed out that with the moves he made, he only has like eight draft picks left. And I wouldn't be surprised if he trades out of all of those, and he's not in the draft at all. Yeah, he uh, definitely uh, he picked up a lot of picks from uh, Washington for next season. Yep. All right. And what is work? Schedule's looking like up in the future. So if he knows he has some um, late night shifts, he's probably going to shift it. Yeah. Is he Washington to win fewer games this coming season? Is that why he's trading for a lot of Washington picks? I don't know. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. So. I do think a good topic would be, you know, in addition to, you know, just the draft, is just talking about what ratings matter for which, which, which position. And I think that would be really helpful to the new coaches since they probably don't really have an idea um, as much as we do. That is an interesting discussion, and that's one that a lot of people have different ideas on. Exactly. Okay. A nice debate. <laughs> well, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely look into that. And also... Uh, for you guys out there, as you hear us kind of kicking around some ideas, uh, we got the forum page, we got the email thread that um, that we keep bouncing back and forth. If you guys have some topics you want us to discuss during the off season, and we can get into the show, let us know. Uh, the idea is to make the show better, to make the league better, to make everyone uh, more excited about the game that we all love and that we enjoy that we play. So get those topics coming in and. Uh, 
those coaches out there be ready for an email coming in uh, requesting you to come on to the show. So uh, as we come to wrap this up again, I want to say that we had a great season today or this year. I uh, want to congratulate Steve on winning the championship. Congratulate Dean on a good run this year. And uh, best of luck next year. Congratulate Mitch as far as uh, making it to the championship. And all the coaches out there that made it to the playoffs and all the coaches in general uh, that's in the league and uh, wishing you all the best. So as we come to wrap this up, uh, we don't have a game this week, so you got to come with something new, Mitch. Go ahead and take us home. Uh, well, goodness. Um, let's, uh, I don't know. Man, you put me on the spot. I say uh, let's, uh, let's get drafted, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>